What is up everybody and welcome to FLW videos in a few short days we're going to single-handedly have one of the best community days that we have had in quite some time we're talking about the Gibble community day this is going to be on June 6 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. within your own local time so of course a lot of people that maybe haven't played in quite some time could potentially be coming back just because of this community day but regardless of that a lot of people are super excited about it and you may be curious as to what exactly you need to do to go ahead and utilize anything and everything that you can for this event to fully take advantage of it so that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's episode of course covering a guide for the gibble community day i hope you do enjoy this and hopefully it is helpful but if it is make sure to smash that like button and subscribe but without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video So as far as the tips are concerned, we're going to be talking about anything and everything that you can do now leading up to community day. Then we'll be talking about community day itself. And then finally talking about what you're going to do after community day. And that's actually extremely important. So make sure that you stick around for that. I can promise you it will be worth it. You're going to definitely hit that like button after you hear what I have to say about that. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk first about the top items that you want to prioritize. Now the first two are going to be lucky eggs and incense. Now this is important because for the lucky eggs, we're actually going to be getting times three catch XP. And for every Pokemon that you catch, if you get a lucky egg, you will be able to double that. So that is going to be huge, especially if you plan to get out there. So secondarily, if you're going to use a lucky egg and you maybe only have one, maybe only have, uh, you know, two or so, you want to try to line up some of your friendships if you possibly can, getting yourself up to a best, an ultra, whatever, because it will double that XP. And this is going to be a great way to get yourself XP. And then secondarily, as far as the incense is concerned, we're going to be getting a times uh, three hour for your incense. So you're going to want to be using that simply to get yourself more spawns because Gibble Candy is extremely rare. So any extra spawn that you can get out of it is going to be extra candy in your pocket. So make sure that you get out there and use yourself an incense. And then secondarily, uh, two other items that I want to prioritize, pretty much the same one, is going to be the pineapple berry as well as the silver pineapple berry. Now these are going to be important from the candy perspective because you're wanting to get yourself as much candy as you possibly can during this community day simply because it's a rare Pokemon. So from now on, stop using your pineapple berries on that Reggie Rock, that Reggie Steel, that whatever, or your silver pineapple berries and hold them for the Gibble community day. That way you can go out there <clears throat> and get yourself uh, some extra candy out of that. And as far as getting yourself pineapple berries, get out there, spend some stops. You can get some that way. And then secondarily, you can actually get them occasionally from gifts as well. So make sure that you get out there, open up your gifts. Got a screenshot for you there just to kind of prove the concept here. But basically what I'm going to be doing is straight up building up my pineapple berries for the next couple of days leading up until uh, the Gibble Community Day. And then of course being ready and catching as many as I possibly can there to get as much candy as possible. So yeah, definitely prioritize those items and that'll set you up for success on Community Day. Secondarily though, as far as the tip is concerned, we're going to be focusing on Mega Pokemon. So whenever you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, you get a really cool bonus where you're going to earn an extra candy when you catch the typing of the Mega Evolution. So in this screenshot, we've got just a Charizard up here. This is going to be a Charizard uh, Mega Y version where it's going to be fire and flying. So any fire and flying type Pokemon that you would catch with this Pokemon, you get an additional candy. So this is, of course, what it's going to look like here. So basically what you're going to want to do is probably an hour before the actual community day, you're going to want to mega evolve a dragon type mega evolution or a ground type mega evolution. So as far as Pokemon Go is concerned, we do have access to three dragon type mega evolutions. The first one being Mega Charizard X. Make sure you are doing X because the Y does not have the dragon typing so make sure it's an x and then secondarily you also have mega altaria so that was available for the last community day so hopefully you can get yourself uh, the mega evolution out of that one and then finally we have mega ampharo so those are the three that you're going to make sure that you want to mega evolve simply for the bonus of getting yourself an extra candy just by having a pokemon mega evolve that's going to be a super clutch way to get yourself some extra candy without even necessarily doing anything and of course it is on the catch there so that's what you're going to want to do before the actual community day. Now, this, of course, is a tip that's like the hour before it because you do get the mega evolution for eight hours. That is, of course, going to take up your entire community day 
with community day only being six hours from 11 a.m to 5 p.m local time so sometime around 11 a.m maybe a little bit beforehand i'm gonna go ahead and mega evolve my charizard up to the mega x get myself that dragon typing on there that way when i catch myself a gibble i'll get myself an extra candy so that's going to be a huge deal going on uh but anyways let's go ahead and dive into the actual community day so of course we've got the community day box what are you going to do with this one is it going to be worth it well beforehand i mentioned that incense and lucky eggs are going to be two crucial items that you would definitely want to make sure that you have for the event so if you don't have one that's going to be some good value out of that and then of course we've got an elite charge tm here now for me personally because I haven't been playing that much over the last eight months. Many of you know I took a break uh, from playing Pokemon Go. So in some sense, I'm a little bit behind as far as some of my Pokemon. So an Elite Charge Team allows me to catch up kind of working backwards, getting some crucial Pokemon caught back up, getting them that exclusive move. So for me, I'm actually gonna be buying the Community Day box, but typically I'd probably end up skipping it. But because I haven't played for so long, I'm wanting to get it so I can give myself some flexibility and then sort of play catch up a little bit. So that's of course gonna be uh, my tip for that. I'm thinking about buying it, uh, but that's of course related to my situation. But anyways, let's go to move on a little bit. We talked a little bit about the times three catch XP. Now, the reason why this is so important is because we got an update in Pokemon Go where an excellent throw is going to be worth a thousand XP whenever you catch the Pokemon with an excellent throw. So if you go ahead and add on that times three catch XP, you're up to 3000 XP for every excellent throw. And then you throw on a lucky egg. You're talking about 6,000 experience for every single Gibble that you can catch with an excellent throw. Now, I don't have to be a mathematician to tell you that is a lot of XP if you're catching hundreds of Gibbles. And for me personally, I'm aiming to hit level 44 by the end of the community day. And one of the things stopping me is experience. So I'm definitely going to get out there. I'm definitely going to be using a lucky egg. I'm going to be trying to hit as many excellent throws as I possibly can. And it's actually fairly easy on a Gibble because it's pretty close up to us. So that's going to be a nice kind of bonus there. But I'm definitely trying to level up. So I think this is going to be a major opportunity regardless of Gibble being there, that times three catch XP is going to be amazing. But anyways, if we go ahead and move on to this, if you're looking for five additional spawns, you can go ahead and take a picture of five Pokemon. You'll get five photo bombs. Now in this regard, they're going to be low level, uh, but I would do it just to get yourself that additional candy, of course. And then beyond that, you're getting yourself uh, the move Earth Power. So if you want to learn more about Earth Power and Garchomp, you can go ahead and check out the deep dive for Garchomp. But I'm actually going to be uploading a video tomorrow that's going to be focusing on the top ground type Pokemon in Pokemon Go from a PvP side and then of course from a raid side as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely stick around. And unfortunately, we're not going to be getting ourselves a Mega Garchomp at the end of the actual event. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So let's say you go ahead and you complete Community Day. You do some lucky trades towards the end of it. You're feeling good. You got yourself a 100% IV shiny gibble that you evolve up into a garchomp you're feeling good and you're just about ready to clear out your bag space but you remember this this is going to be a tip that may seem a little bit strange to go ahead and suggest to not actually transfer your gibble well coincidentally enough we actually have a spotlight hour that's going to be happening the week after the community day that's going to be for slowpoke and if you go ahead and check this out you're going to see that there is a times two transfer candy bonus for this event of course you can see some others here where it's uh you know catch xp catch candy whatever but slowpoke is going to get that times two transfer candy so what are you going to do you're going to hold on to your gibbles and then you're going to go ahead and transfer them during the slowpoke spotlight hour which is going to be from 6 p.m to 7 p.m local time on june 15th and then get yourself double candy on the transfer that's going to be absolutely amazing if you get out there and catch yourself 200 300 gibble that you are ready to transfer that means you're instantly going to get yourself up to double that on the transfer which is going to be insane so as far as the gibble candy is concerned if you go ahead and get all of these tip stunts that we have talked about today gibble candy may not end up being rare to you because you're going to get out there you're going to use those pineapple berries you're going to mega evolve a pokemon beforehand you're going to save all of your transfers for the end of the event and make sure that you hold on to it for that slowpoke spotlight hour and then of course get double transfer candy there so i would imagine you are going to get an insane amount of gibble candy so of course 
make sure that you go ahead and evolve up and get yourself the exclusive move and then maybe think about transferring later on right and then that way you've got enough candy to actually power up garchomp just a week and a half later that's at least going to be my plan i'm definitely going to evolve up get myself the exclusive move but as far as powering it up is concerned i'm going to hold off that way i've got the candy i've got uh, the chance to get myself some more stardust along the way but anyways i hope you did enjoy this episode hopefully it was helpful i would absolutely love to know if you have any extra tips that you would like to go ahead and put in the comment section below make sure to go ahead and do that so you can help anyone and everyone if you did enjoy it if it is helpful make sure to hit that like button and subscribe but anyways, I hope you did enjoy it. If you are interested in supporting the channel, go ahead and check out the Patreon tier in the description. I uploaded a new Discord server where we're talking about Pokemon Go. We're going to be coordinating for raids. We talk about PvP. So if you're interested in that, supporting the channel and connecting with other Pokemon Go players, make sure to check out that link in the description. And I will see you next time.